All right, just in time for the midterms, it turns out that the cards are on the table. The battlefield has been chosen, the troops are enlisted, or apparently they aren't, um, but the social justice people, I believe, have declared their hell to potentially die on or potentially win and as of november 1st it is on they this is going to be their last hurrah and they want to take back the house and the senate in the midterms and this is how they, they think that they're going to do it um i'll get to that in a second but make sure to check out Gatriarchy tonight, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm not entirely sure which channel it's going to be on. It might end up being on my channel or it might end up going on the Liberal Hammers channel. I maybe one of the other guys, but I haven't heard back from any of them. Um, we're going to have Gigtau Berserker on. He is that Swedish guy who lives in Sweden and he's pretty cute. Actually, I'm not sure if he's going to show his face but yeah okay so this thing that's happening is kind of terrifying i, I gotta be honest like it, it is terrifying that they have managed to pull this together so yesterday i heard about this kind of crazy thing that i thought was just confined to google um, where there was this worker walkout thing where all these people decided to walk out of Google and demand all of this typical SJW talking points, you know, diversity, equ equity, hiring, and, and that kind of a thing, which seemed really absurd. And my thought at the time was, okay, hashtag get woke, go broke. I mean, if it's Google doing this, everybody's sick of Google anyway, people can go elsewhere. Well, I, I was kind of underestimating just how big this actually is. And it turns out that dozens of major companies just warned Trump not to mess with transgender rights. And it's 56 corporations joined a statement. And I want to read this statement because it, it, this statement is so obviously written by a small group of these diversity officers that must be holding all these places hostage because it's not super well written you know like it, it doesn't have any sort of legal wording in it. it it doesn't make any specific mention of what they exactly have a problem with it's all it's all emotional rhetoric and everything but they got a massive amount of companies and serious companies to sign up for this and so that's what's scary about it like somehow i mean maybe this is a little bit more bark than it is bite like maybe the companies felt inclined to sign here and everything like i don't i don't know but um it's so strange so we the undersigned businesses stand with the millions of people in America who identify as transgender, gender non-binary, or intersex, and call for all such people to be treated with the respect and dignity everyone deserves. Okay, um, stand with the millions of people that's already weird. Like they're trying to say that uh, th that that there's millions of these people. That's quite debatable, first of all. And then stand with like uh, okay, so that means you're their ally, which means that they're you're you're their um army army usually. Uh, you, you follow their orders usually. If 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 that's what you're saying, okay. But I'm gonna move on. We oppose any administrative and legislative efforts to erase transgender protections through reinterpretations of existing laws and regulations. That is the thing that is really, um, I hate to say it, problematic. 
but uh, technically it is actually problematic because when they say we oppose it, any administrative and legislative efforts to erase transgender protectives, protections through reinterpretations of existing laws and regulations, the thing is, is that they're framing that as if Trump is trying to change Title IX. The only thing that Trump is potentially trying to change is the way that Obama reinterpreted Title IX. That's a problem. Title IX only applies to the school system, and it applies to biological sex and biological sex only. That is what the law is. You can go ahead and read it. It says, you know, if, if you're going to violate Title IX, it means you violated somebody's rights based on their sex. That's what Title IX is. Well, Obama was the one that went around and changed it. He reinterpreted the law to make it about gender. And that's why it became this thing where they could get mad at people with Title IX from the federal government if people were being, you know, uh, what's the word? when they use their incorrect pronouns. I don't even remember the term for it anymore because I hate dealing with these people and I, I used to talk to them a lot. Um, they, um, mispronouned? Is that the word? Misgendered. That's it. Misgendered. <laughs> like, people could get in, t in trouble for misgendering somebody on university campuses on a federal level, even though Title IX only applied to sex. So, the Trump administration is just saying, hey, we're not going to do that anymore because that's not what the law actually is. And that was being abused. And so if they're saying we oppose any administrative and legislative efforts to erase transgender protections through reinterpretations of existing laws and regulations, well, I hate to inform you, but there wasn't any, period, because you can't change your biological sex. It's just literally, literally impossible. Now, should there be protections in place for transgender people under some sort of federal thing? Uh, I am not going to make that argument. And you want to know why? Because I'm not trans. I'm not an expert at transgender issues. I have other things to worry about. But I will tell you this. If you're some sort of trans legal expert, you are perfectly, perfectly in your right to argue that case and come up with something fair. And it better be fair. Otherwise, people might not want to support it. I certainly won't. And I will have an opinion, probably. Uh, but this stuff doesn't sound fair. Because the next line is, we also fundamentally oppose any policy or regulation that violates the privacy rights of those that identify as transgender, gender non-binary, or intersex. And that's where you know that these people are starting to cling to some little strange piece of power that they kind of know that they don't really deserve. Like they realize that the clock is ticking on their ability to hold these companies hostage by way of federally protecting people. Like what I'm imagining in my head when I realized this is that Obama somehow was having it federally mandated that he could accuse places, maybe not Obama, but maybe city places could accuse employers of discrimination for all sorts of different things. And um, like on university campuses, it was really, really, really easy for these people to just, you know, use Title IX as leverage to win arguments and gain more and more power, right? And um, then... But ultimately, it was a house of cards. It was it was a, it was a sham. They didn't deserve to have that power under Title IX, um, and now they want to be able to hide what their birth certificate says. Like they want to be able to hide their biological sex so that they can continue to abuse this little loophole that they were previously exploiting, even though they aren't supposed to be exploiting it anymore. So when they say, we also fundamentally oppose any policy or regulation that violates the privacy rights of those that identify as transgender, gender non-binary, or intersex, they're saying that we oppose 
the government's right to ask what your biological sex is, as if that's some horrible, horrible, horrible thing. And uh, it's not. It's really, really not. You know, like trans people, they, uh, th I remember a time when trans people actually did have a thick skin. They brag about having a thick skin now, but they don't. They're, they're pampered little, um, not all of them, hashtag not all, but the, 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 drastic, the drastic majority of transgender activists are the most spoiled, entitled, they, they, they act like a social aristocracy they you know and that's why the transgender phenomenon came into being young immature people saw how much power these people had over everybody so they decided they wanted a little slice of the pie like you know oh i'm trans which means you have to do what i say and you better not misgender me and you better not me 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 they they did act like that it's not like this imagined scenario that jordan peterson was making up in his head when he talked about that potentially happening in canada no, that was the reality of anywhere that you were, that these people were common. They were social tyrants, and they were often enabled by the authorities, and then it created an actual trend of people wanting those privileges for themselves. And it got to the point where it was like, okay, so if you're trans, huh, that's interesting. You don't even look trans. You don't seem trans. You look just like a girl. You didn't even get a haircut. Um, you're telling me you're not a woman? And, and she'd be like, I'm telling you I'm non-binary. I'd be like, okay, but so were you born as a male? Is that? And, and be like, you don't have a right to know. And it's like, these people just want these weird rights where they get to get mad at you anytime they want and order you around. And then you don't have even the courtesy of them being obligated to explain why, like how and why that works. Right. And that's where it got so irritating. And, and they are saying that they want to hold on to that right. So I'm going to continue with this memo. In the last two decades, dozens of federal courts have affirmed the rights and identities of transgender people. Cognizant of growing medical and scientific consensus, courts have recognized that policies that force people into a binary gender definition determined by birth and autonomy fail to reflect the, the complex realities of gender identity and human biology. And this is how you know that this was written by a wacky SJW um, HR board and not any sort of legal anything, you know? Like, it's just, that sounds so silly. Okay. Uh, recognizing that diversity and inclusion are good for business. Sorry, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read that again. Recognizing that diversity and inclusion are good for business. Okay. Um, okay. Well, well, we'll, we'll just keep reading for, for the sake of <laughs> recognizing that diversity and inclusion are good for business and that discrimination imposes enormous productivity costs and exerts undue burdens it's so funny like they're saying the exact opposite of what is true and every you know everybody knows get woke go broke and they're having to like say this and and say it multiple times as if it's like just saying it enough times is going to make everybody believe it uh they say, recognizing that diversity and inclusion are good for business and that discrimination imposes enormous productivity costs and exerts undue burdens. Oh, because you're a little crazy transgender pronoun discrimination HR board doesn't. Hundreds of companies, including the undersigned, have continued to expand inclusion for transgender people across corporate America. Currently, more than 80% of the Fortune 500 have clear gender identity protections. Two-thirds have transgender inclusive health care coverage. Hundreds have LGBTQ plus and allies business resource groups, and internal training efforts. Transgender people are our beloved family members and friends and our valued team members. What harms transgender people harms our companies. Yeah, we heard you. We call for respect and transparency in policymaking and for equality under the law 
for transgender people, except for equality under the law for transgender people, violates what you are asking for. That's why they're, oh, that's, that's getting me a little fired up. Getting me a little bit fired up. Getting me just a little, just a little. That's, and that's how you know a lawyer did not write this at all. And I feel like I sound a little bit like Ben Shapiro at the moment. I like, I'm, I'm channeling Ben Shapiro. And I, I don't even really, I'm not even really a fan. Like, I don't really sit around watching Ben Shapiro. I don't talk as fast as him. I talk even less nasal than him, which is weird because I, I have a pretty nasal voice. Um, but I feel like sitting ar around and, and, and being like him at the moment. Like, that's that's just how I feel at the moment. So, the companies are um, Accenture, which I don't know, but Adobe, Airbnb, Altria Group, um, Amalgamated Bank, Amazon, American Airlines, Apple, Automatic, Dead, Automatic Data Processing, Bank of America Merrill Lynch, Ben & Jerry's, BNY Mellon, Cargill, Cisco Systems, City, I imagine that's Citibank, Clifford Chance, Corning Incorporated, Corteva AgriScience, the Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont, damn, um, Dutch Bank, EI DuPont, Denmur and Company, Facebook, Fastly Inc., Google, surprise, surprise, Hogan Lavelle's International LLP, H HSBC, IBM, Intel, Intuit, Iron Mountain, JP Morgan and Chase, Levi's, LinkedIn, Lush Handmade Cosmetics, Lyft, Marriott International, Mass Mutual, MGM Resorts International, Microsoft, Nike, Pepsi, Replacements, LTD, Ropes and Gray, Royal Bank of Canada, S&P Global, Salesforce, Shepard Mullen, Sodexo Inc., Splunk, State Street Corporation, The Coca-Cola Company, The Dow Chemical Company, TiVo Corporation, Thrillum Asset Management, Twitter, Uber, Warby Parking. So, obviously, do I need to say, uh, try to boycott those companies as best you can? I don't know. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I have to say, <laughs> selfishly, I kind of like going to Whole Foods because I really like the salad bar and their desserts. So I'm I'm glad that Whole Foods isn't on that list. <laughs> and I just have to wonder, like, how how did they actually get these companies to sign off on that? Like what? Like there's it's some I'm something is fishy in these waters. Something is a uh, um. I smell a little bit of BS in the barn. I don't know. All right. Uh, tune in, Gatriarchy, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. See you there.